Okay, so again, we understand our purpose, we know ourselves. What is our main goal in this world? And we constantly check in inside, inside. This is very important. Inner management, inner engineering. We always see outside, do outside, but check inside. Check in with your brain, your heart, your gut. How do you feel about what you're doing? And check in with yourself more often about your purpose, your destiny. And then you see how it can be applicable to something like the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, the biggest challenges on the planet. How can your science become translationally applicable to the biggest challenges on the planet? Make a list of your top five, your top 10, your top 50 people that you wanna get in touch with in the field. And do research about what they're doing at the edge of their field. Synthesize, ask questions, work on our social skills, build groups of people that we can engage with on these cutting edge topics and share that content around China and the world. Even though someone's opinion may contradict yours. Where's my friend Alan? It's all about your perspective. Who are we and what is the nature of this reality? Five, four, three, two, one. Ni hao. Ni hao. Sheshe, Shuelin, Sheshe, Yulong, Yi, Peking University. I will not be speaking in Mandarin. I wish I could. Uh, my name is Alan Sakyan. Um, I host a show called Simulation in San Francisco, California, where we interview some of the greatest minds across all different fields. Biotech, neurotech, AI and robotics, blockchain and cryptocurrency, emotional intelligence, geopolitics, meditation and spirituality. We feature all different leaders from different fields. And we'll be talking about some of the strategies that we can embody to help us reach our maximum potential fastest. One of the most important pieces of advice over the last thousands of years that people have been talking about ever since the beginning of civilization is know thyself. So who are you? What is your purpose? What is your mission? What are your goals? What are your dreams? What are your aspirations? You know, here we are in the life sciences building at Peking University. So many of you are focused on biology, animals, plants, neuroscience, all different aspects of the life sciences. Is this what is going to get you excited every single morning when you wake up and you say, I'm very excited to go and pursue my field of research? So that's the big question is look at Look at ourselves in the mirror and figure out every day, is this what I'm doing that I'm most passionate about, that I'm most excited to wake up in the morning and do every single day? So that first piece of advice, know yourself. And if you don't know exactly what you want to do in the life sciences, or if you don't know exactly what, how you want to apply it out into the world, a really great place to start is by looking at something like the Sustainable Development Goals. So you can identify how your life sciences can help with ending poverty, with maximizing education, with helping our environment around the world, with helping feed everyone around the planet. There's so many different ways to increase our longevity. And so this is another really good way to kind of be able to see what exactly, how do, how do I want my science to make a translational impact out into the real world? So much of what we want to achieve is based on people that we connect with, that we network with, that we meet. And so we have this idea called a top 50 that we like sharing. So how many of you, and you can raise your hand, how many of you have a list of at least five people that you want to get in touch with? That you would like to maybe mentor you or you'd like to get coffee with? How many, raise your hand if you have a list of five people. 
One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So this is very good. This is very good that you have these lists because this is one of the most simple things to do to maximize your potential. If you have at least a list, at least you know in the general direction more for where you want to go and what you want to achieve. So if you want to study something like neuroscience and you want to get deeper into neuroscience, who are five leaders in neuroscience that are doing things that you find really interesting and then learn more about them, learn more about them and learn more about their research. And why is that important? Well, what people are doing is they're usually pushing what is called the edge of knowledge. It's the farthest out we know. We know the brain is very complicated. And so some people are doing some things with the brain that are at the edge of what humans know about brain science. And so if you want to go and find people at the edge, you can more easily find them as mentors. You can more easily advance your career and advance your impact that way. So if there's at least one thing to take away from this talk is make your list of the people that you want, that you look up to, that you want to get in touch with, that you want to do more research about. You see how it sets a goal and then it gives us something to reach out towards, yes? Cool. And when you do identify those people, you start doing research on them. And there's a lot of different ways to do research on people. This is one way that I personally really enjoy, which is going and finding, we have an interview with you along later today, and you are all welcome to sit in, in that interview if you would like. I will be nervous. <laughs> <laughs> the whole audience, the whole audience. <laughs> and so what have I been doing? I already have a note in my notes with Yulong's name on it, and it has information about him. I've been looking up his lab, I've been looking up his papers, I've been looking up what he studies, and I've been adding that information into my notes. So I'm parsing what he's been doing, finding the key points, putting them into my notes, and then synthesizing, adding my own ideas, my own questions, my own ways of thinking to what he's been studying. And so by doing this research, you can do this via videos, you can do this via papers, you can do this via, uh, via journal articles, all different types of ways, audio podcasts. And so by doing this, you gain a better understanding of these, you know, five people that you want to reach out to in plant science. And if you want to reach out to them, you do research on them, you get to know what they're doing better, and then you can more easily do something like organize you and your friends to come together and get talking about what's going on at that edge of science. So in order for us to become really well-rounded people, we have to learn social skills. We have to learn emotional intelligence. We have to learn empathy. We have to learn how to look at someone in the eyes and have that deep, genuine love and curiosity for who they are and what they strive to achieve in their life. These social skills will take all of your science and amplify it five, ten times because you will become better and better at talking to other people, at collaborating with other people, at networking with other people. This social skills make sense, it's very important, yes? because it'll help the science so much. Other aspects of the social skills are like emotion regulation. So if something comes up and you're starting to feel a little neurotic, 
about it. Lots of emotions flying everywhere. You know, you, this is emotion regulation. Maybe go out and go for a walk. Go out into nature for a little bit. Or maybe do something like go exercise. You know, how can you regulate your emotions so that we're not dwelling on negative thoughts, but that we're constantly going towards a more and more positive future for yourselves and for us all? Perseverance is also crucial. How many times do we hit a wall? We hit walls all the time in everything we do. And so to be able to go past that wall of adversity, it's like a test of faith. Every one of those walls is like a test. Oh, my experiment failed. Yeah, that's going to happen. We're going to have we're going to have challenges like this come up and we have to persevere through them and we have to have good friends and family and community that helps us get through these things. So these social skills are so crucial to advance the science as well. And then once you do get a couple friends that are really interested in that field of animal science or in that field of cell biology. Maybe if you're studying the mitochondria, what you want to do is you want to find five other people that are also interested in the mitochondria and its effects in the cell and the body. And then what you do is you set up a group. You set up a group that can specifically go and study the most cutting edge research on mitochondrial science and then you can all talk together you all go do research and you come back and you share ideas about what you think is happening at the edge of the science and how you can ask questions that maybe haven't been asked before and then what you do with the content, maybe you spend an hour or two hours taking a bunch of notes, asking a bunch of questions. Maybe you want to do something like, like take a picture of what your biggest questions were. And maybe you want to take a picture of the group and how you guys got together. And maybe you want to post that into WeChat. And you want to start sharing that publicly so more people around China and around the world can get interested in what you're studying. And it's like a butterfly effect that happens. Someone sees you talking about some cutting edge science and they say, wow, I didn't know that that was happening. I want to get more involved too. And we have a more knowledgeable world. So the sharing side of this is really crucial as well. Okay, so again, we understand our purpose. We know ourselves. What is our main goal in this world? And we constantly check in inside, inside. This is very important. Inner management, inner engineering. We always see outside, do outside, but check inside. Check in with your brain, your heart, your gut. How do you feel about what you're doing? And check in with yourself more often about your purpose, your destiny. And then you see how it can be applicable to something like the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, the biggest challenges on the planet. How can your science become translationally applicable to the biggest challenges on the planet? Make a list of your top five, your top 10, your top 50 people that you wanna get in touch with in the field. And do research about what they're doing at the edge of their field. Synthesize, ask questions. Work on our social skills, build groups of people that we can engage with on these cutting edge topics and share that content around China and the world. So that's it, that's it for the, the, this portion of the talk. I wanted to keep it very short. I wanted to open it up for a lots of questions from the audience. I wanna you know, go back and forth with you guys about um, you, what your questions may be, and maybe I can help provide some, some insight. You know, I was actually talking to um, Shuelin yesterday about, uh, about some of the differences between the United States and China, because in so many ways, you know, we're, we're human, and, and, we, and we have families and friends and love and all these types of things, very similar things. But there's like different cultural dynamics in a sense where in the United States, I may be comfortable doing something like sending a cold email out to someone 
that's you know in that list of my maybe top 10, top 50 people. But maybe in China, it's not so okay to do something like send out just a cold email. So there's these interesting different cultural dynamics that I'd love to, you know, to unpack and just see. Maybe there are some things that we can talk about that I can share, I can learn from you, you guys can um, learn from maybe what I have to share. So that's it. Shesha, thank you. <laughs>